true crime would ever say. And, um, I finally got some, I went on a YouTube channel, and, alright, well, the YouTube have some little info here. Great description has came about in the video, um, what is it, the greeny guy, awesome YouTube channel he has there. Greeny. Of course, I didn't get the first name. <laughs> but he did a great job of uh, showing the crime scene and everything. And, um, oh man, there's so much good stuff in this. And I took screenshots of his video of what he made so I can give a little insight. I want to go over this first, though. And this is supposedly where the bodies were found. Not too far from the bridge. Not where the other two possible sites could be. Over here or over here. So they didn't even make it too far. Which is still very disturbing to me because... 50 witnesses throughout this trail. And there's now a time gap. Because if the bodies were found in here. And, uh. Oh, man. And what these girls endured throughout their, I'm going to say, tortured murder. I am for damn just you know, speechless on how nobody could have heard or especially supposedly someone saying that this happened late at night. If this happened late at night, I mean, it's like, come on. I'm sure there's not people out there that, uh, that don't, you know, when there's dead silence, in the winter time, and you're hearing screeching screams. I mean, and and supposedly all the this took like in them comments I found the uh, Texas that they were screaming at two in the morning. They heard screams, and they're still searching, and there was people searching supposedly all night. And that's another thing. How in the hell were they missed? And if you hear screaming, you know, the first thing with street smarts you do is run towards that screaming, especially if you're searching for somebody. Insane. But what even gets more insane is this video that I watched in how close everything was and uh it's like wow so it's a reenactment video that is true crime investigates greeno recommend anybody check his channel out i just looked at his videos i didn't watch none of them but this one he looks like a cool up straight dude um, but this is a reenactment video. They're showing how he's walking like, you know, the bridge guy. This one is um, showing him, you know, facing the girls, how the bridge guy would look like facing the girls. Now, what gets me is, uh... What really gets me is how the um girls had enough time to video, turn on a video, take a couple pictures, especially of Bridge Guy. 
And someone claims they say in the video, is the creepy guy still following us? Now, right there, immediately, if someone goes off and says, if the creepy guy following us, and, you know, this is where the street smart's supposed to kick in. Instead of taking a picture, instead of starting a video, I'd be texting. Raven. <laughs> yes, sir, my man. The raven flies high. Nice. <laughs> Love it when them birds fly by. The Native American spirit strong here, people. Especially when the raven makes himself known. Um, anyways. I would have been Texan. Help. Someone's following us. Creepy guy. You know. Why they weren't. Because you know. You think about it. What? The guy didn't even take the phone. But they said that he did take one of the girl's phones. So that means. Maybe. He got confused. Of which girl had the phone out. Or just took one phone. This guy probably that stupid. And one phone was missing. The other one wasn't. But if you're a killer and you're trying to do stuff and come up with creative ways to kill somebody, when you take both phones, unless he used that as a trademark and left it there, knew what they were doing, let them record it because he wants to taunt the law enforcement, he wants to taunt the victim's family, and he wants to make it look like, hey, you're never going to catch me. And so far, he's done that. So, <clears throat> very strange case. Bizarre, and it's starting to get more and more like the Maura Murray case, I can tell you now. And now that I got a visual of this area, mind you, and as you can see, this is like where they might have been standing recording. He's doing the reenactment of the bridge guy. And, you know, if that's how they were recording or took the picture, you know, it's like, damn, why didn't you just text somebody? You're in the middle of the woods, but yet you want to you wanna record and take a picture. Yes, it was good. It was, you know, awesome. But now that you can see, all the misleading information that comes out of this case. And still someone's hiding something. Someone's holding something. And someone don't want someone to get caught. And I will say, now that I've seen this video, as you can see, he gets close. He tells him to go down the hill. Someone claimed that in that audio, they heard long... Um, a long distance walk. And now I know why. Because right there, there it is, the road. I knew there was a damn gut feeling that something was with this road. No one mentions this road. The mother didn't talk about this road. But yet the road is used. And another damn thing that's crazy that this is a private drive. And in the video, Greeno here says there's a house over there. You can see it over there up on the hill. Then to say that, them words right there. As I go over my mapping and I go down this road and you see that sharp corner that leads to a house. Whose house is it? And yeah. If this is a private drive, then Bridge Guy premeditated this is right. And whoever lived there had to have not been home. And he knew the right time to take this on. And what even gets more crazier is that this guy, Greeno, claims that he did use the road. There was no... What this other person says. Now I respect this other person with their three and a half years of, you know, what they have on this case. And this person claims that he went in, you know, the main entrance and went back out the main entrance. But Greeno here 
literally solved my ideas before I ever watched this video. Before I ever watched it, I said this road had to have been used. And I'm going on it that I think it was used. My thoughts, theories, ideas, this is not the facts. But seeing the location and seeing how, you know, this looks and how it went, like Greeno shows, I have a reason with no doubt that I'm going to, all my stuff that I've been saying before I ever watch this video is starting to pan out and look like what it should be. So here we have them going down the hill, still near the bridge. Now there's two ways that they could have walked. Greeno points out. And the first way is straight on down. And there is a, a bank that you can walk. And this would explain that long walk claimed by the video that has been cut. Well, that looks creepy. It looks like an eyeball. But, um, I think it is. <laughs> he had some pitch. Oh, yeah, that's the bridge guy's eye. It was fading away when I screenshot this. I say, damn, where that eyeball? They got ghosts out there, too? Of course, they got two ghosts, but... Anyways, straight down, take a right, and you're right along the ridge of the creek. This right here, oh, there it is. There's the house, right there. Now, in the in my video, when I look into this and go around that corner, it looks like it's further off in the distance, further set back, but that could be where it is, and you can see it through the trail. There's the friggin' house. Now, as you can see, being said, that house right there, and this killer walked them down to the ridge of the creek Right here, as you can see, you know, when they, when this guy did start, and then, then, like I said, there's a time, there's a um gap to where, you know, someone said they heard screaming late at night. So what did this guy do from this point to three, like say 2.30, 3 o'clock on till that time of the screaming. Did he literally torture him? He must have, he could have been literally scaring the hell out of him, prepping him, talking to him. You know what's going to happen? Maybe talking out of what he's going to do to them. And they're so scared and frightened. But then again, you got the issue of, you know, that they were fighting to get away. So if they were fighting to get away and the nails were dirt in them and clawing. And you know. One didn't leave because the other one was getting killed. It, it still brings that point of. 50 witnesses didn't hear nothing. And if they weren't screaming it's like. Mm, but if they were. You know, it's just insane to think about. There's this gap. Now, also, if you go up the ridge near the, as as um Greeno's talking here, if you where his hand is pointing out, you see, oh, come on, his hand's pointing out. That ridge is impossible. He shows to walk down. So that's why I said they had to have gone straight down the side of the bridge, take a right onto the banking, like right here. And this even gets even better, because there, to me, I believe, is the second road. There's two roads, I said, in this. But one of them still to be, like the uh, private drive seems to be way back. So I'm thinking, what the hell? Could there be three roads? But still, there's more roads. I was right about the second road because this is up on the ridge of the first road, the private drive. This one's down. As you can see, the private drive here is clear. This one's covered with leaves. And this is where he shows the ridge 
very difficult terrain to crawl down, climb down, or walk down. Another, you know, and he says in his thoughts, theories, ideas that they probably didn't go this way. But here's another clear vision of that goddamn road, second road I speak of. And this is where they went down by the bridge. So as you can see, as they go down here, you want to watch this video to get the full details. But as they go down here, they hang a right there on the ridge. Once again, there's another piece of the ridge. Now they're near the brook. Now, as you can see, yes, the water on this side of the brook is up to your ankles, this side knee high. So, like I said, if the girls did try and run at this point, they're running out of deep, knee high water. Right here, it was all knee high. If they try to run up, their friggin' pants would have been soaking wet. Their shoes are now filled with water. And this dipstick, you know, being the bigger adult, you know, caught him and did what he had to do because he got very angry. And, of course, this person has a lot of anger issues against women. Now, like I said, if these girls would have went, like I said, as you can see, ridges, these high, steep mountains. These girls could have ran to the left and ran up the hill. I guarantee these girls would have gotten away from that bridge guy. Because to me, he was looked like he's fat and out of shape and trying to run up hills. And these girls were a little bit athletic. I think they would have gotten away from this guy. Hit back on that bridge. Get down to the place where they came. Get out. And they, I forgot the screenshot, but in the, in the beginning, he shows the open trails. And there's two benches, mind you. Two benches. So that bench video that I show a bridge guy the week or two before, or in, you know, July, looking, he must have been sitting on these benches too, watching. So over there, now we're at the place up in this area where the murder scene was. Out of the water, into the woods, probably, say, like 300 feet or more, 500 feet, and that's where the murder scene took place. But what gets me is how. You see here, here's where they got ankle deep, and then they get knee deep. And if the girls tried to run out of this knee deep, of course they're going to trip, stumble. The guy's going to get his momentum going, because right, and it was the wrong thing to do. If they had a little bit of street smarts, they could have done what I said, and I would have thought of that. Bang, run to the left, run to the hills, up the hill, so this fat bastard would trip, fall, and can't do nothing. Someone said, yes, they had a gun. He had the gun. Yes, he had the gun. But would he have used that gun with 50 witnesses around to, that would have drawn attention. And that would have probably been a little bit better for them. But they didn't do that. This is the area supposedly where they were found. And as you can see, not too far from the waterway. This right here now. And as you can see the leaves, there is this must be the road that we seen just a few minutes ago, covered with leaves. But it's under the bridge, and they, they could have, he, I mean, he could have rightfully driven there. Rightfully driven there. Or, you know, stalked them there. They did do a reenactment of the, um... And I don't know why he didn't put this road besides under the bridge that it does connect to this road. So you go off this road, you come in and under the round the bridge. But there's a whole nother road there. I'd like to know where that road leads to. Um, yeah, of course, this is all another side of it and, you know, of the other side of the bridge where I believe the road begins off the other one maybe and then you take a sharp left and it leads right into this right or maybe it will go to the right out no that's the riverway so out from the left 
as you can see, and it's called. But this, this gives me an insight, boy, of what. And just to have this. Oh, and then I, f I thought I did that with the trees where he. I think. Hang on a sec. I did do a um, thing where he was standing. The bridge guy supposedly stood near the tree. Where the hell did that go? Oh, it's further back here. Sorry. So this thing here, what I said in one of my other, and it was this, there's the uh, trail that is now supposedly shut off, no one allowed, whatever friggin' reason why, but I wanted to get all that, but then here we have with the tree, where I show in the video someone shows bridge guy standing behind this, stalking him, but I don't know why they would. he would stand behind here and then take his time to go back and around and up and over when, honestly, he could have rightfully stood under the bridge as they walked over. So, bear with me. So this, he could have rightfully been standing under the bridge and it would have been an easy access to pull up, up and over here. Under the bridge, come up over here and then come in. Besides, stand over here or over here by this tree. I thought I, sh I thought I, uh, I must have not. Have. But this is an area right by that tree, of course. Like I said, where they said they have them in a picture. Which I believe, you know what? He could have been standing rightfully under. Oh, come on. Hey. Now my dots go. No! No, you get to a good point. You gotta shut the goddamn phone off on the video. Ah! Anyways, as I was saying, this is a combined video. I think, yeah, he stood under this bridge, then saw the girls walk by, then walked up and walked after him. Kept his eye on him all the way up until he found that point where he wanted to get up there and make sure that he was going to follow him. Standing behind the tree, I mean, yeah, that could have been happening too, just like he, uh, the Greeno shows here. But I think he took under the bridge. And whatever the hell he did over in that area, over in that area under the bridge. He must have premeditated, got there first, then walked this way, then he had, then went back up. Then to follow them straight in. I don't know. You know, these are my thoughts, theories, ideas. These are not the facts. Like I said, I respect the person who told me that he, he did walk in through and from the main entrance, then walked back out. I respect that. But now that I got more down here, and even the mother couldn't even explain anything about this road. But here it is. Greeno did a great job on this. And as you can see, why Bridge Guy bent his leg sideways because little sissy boy's afraid he's going to fall off the bridge. Which it is kind of crazy knowing this bridge is like that. And they didn't put no railings on it. But, um, hey, the girls did have some guts, but they lack of street smarts because I would have texted if some freak started following me over a bridge and I felt very uncomfortable because, right, at first you're looking and you're taking a picture like, come on, like they did and he wasn't there. Then all of a sudden, you're almost at the end of the bridge, and there he is. You take a picture, there's nothing there. All of a sudden, he comes up up in nowhere, and now there he is. Bang. After that, to me, you know, I would have text, help, 911. But they, they decided to take a picture and put a recorder on. Which to me, ah. You know, I did tell my son with his mental disabilities, if you ever come across something in a situation, you know, trying to give him to teach him street smarts, 
You know, run like a, the kid could run. He can run. All right? The kid can run. He was on track, track and field, and the coach loved him, but he never went through with it, and he could run. I said, you run to a public place. Never run into the woods. Never run where you know there's never going to be nobody. Because when them woods, in that dark area, in that space, in that you know, hole, in that cave, you're going to trap yourself. And that's what these girls did. They trapped themselves. Even though they still could have even ran the trail. As they got off the bridge. Run like hell because some creepy guy is coming. And if you feel that, you need to do something. You need to get the hell out of there. Any kid watching this, if you feel unsafe and if uncomfortable, you see this freak coming and you're out in the middle of nowhere, run to where you know you're going to get somewhere. And that guy was fat and out of shape. Excuse me, and I'm sure, damn sure, he wouldn't have even caught up to these girls if they were in sports and running. I mean, they could have ran if that guy looked like a lazy bastard is right, and he want, and he does things like this because, and he has a gun because he knows that if he does it any way else or if he tries to do it and they get away, he knows that he ain't going to, I know what he's thinking, he ain't going to be able to run after nobody, that fat shit. That's why I always said run up that hill. Run up that hill, he probably would have tripped, slipped all over the leaves, fell, dropped his gun, and they would have been out of there back over this bridge whew, and get the hell out of Dodge. But sorry, I'm not busting nobody's balls. I'm not trying to make anybody feel two inches big, but they didn't have the right street smarts to do this. They were smart enough to take the picture, do the phone thing, but it should have just kept going. And 991, yeah, 991, <laughs> 911 call should be called, or they should have texted at least somebody to say, hey, we're being followed. Get here. Find us. And like, I, oh man, it's just sad. It's a sad story, but this video gave me a lot of insight, gave me a lot of shit to think about, and <clears throat> it's like, wow, this person is being very protective, or being protective by someone, meaning to say, that's what I wanted to say, because if he had that much play, and them, <laughs> in an area, mind you, <clears throat> 50 people on the trail, though. And <clears throat> that gap of the, when he got him down the hill, got him over the creek, and then nothing. But that explains the long walk in any video edited. Maybe the cops did take that out because all it was was walking. There is supposedly something missing between guys down the hill. What was said? Um, pfft. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that and come up with something. But, guys, who knows? You know, you're all done down the hill. Or, guys, you know what time it is down the hill. You know, someone wrote in a comment to ask, I don't know if they were asking me, TCT, to say, guys, down the hill, there it is. If it wasn't me, but I don't know where they're going with, with that. Because <laughs> I sure in the hell never been to Delphi in my life, but... Guys, down the hill. I couldn't even I couldn't even duplicate that guy's voice. And it's stuck in my head. But I did it, whatever. Guys, down the hill. But to think what he said in between, guys. I don't know. I don't know what the hell he's calling them. Guys. They're not fucking guys. Shows the stupidity of this guy. Stupidity. BG, you're stupid. So anyways, yeah, bridge guy, <laughs> you're going to get caught, something's going to come up, you're dumb, but 
I want to thank Greeno for going over this and uh, making that video. Great video. And anybody I come up with, I'd like to mention, go check out their articles. Go check out their channels. Just like Jason Hebert. He's another one. Great content. Great videos. Um, and, yeah, I'm glad now that I got a view of this. I mean, it's just awesome to have find out <laughs> that, yeah, there's three roads. Two roads, three roads. Two roads down there. A place where the killer could have parked. I'm not saying that's what happened, but now that I get a visual of everything, mm, that's right. More strange stuff, though. This this guy's definitely being, whether it be law enforcement, whether it be a judge, whether it be someone that's just that popular in that town that no one's got the you no know, guts to stand up to him, whatever the hell it may be, whatever the hell it may be. This story is just getting more insane, especially when I get an idea of what the place looks like. But I still would love to go out there and check it out myself. And like I say, challenge that BG to come to the bridge. Yeah, let's see how far you get with me, buddy. Why don't you do something to a man, not the two innocent little girls. Yeah, that's a challenge, too. But until that next video, be safe, take care, always beware. Kids, like I say, if you have an opportunity to run, run. If you have an opportunity to outsmart somebody, you got to do it. You just can't let this stuff happen. Especially when you have the woods and leaves and a big fat bastard behind you that look like they he can't even run 10 friggin' minutes before being <laughs> all out of breath and out of shape and slipping and falling because he's a fat idiot. Other than that, out.